What's good, y'all? It's your boy Clarence, and we are here once again with day 16 of Proverbs. Excuse the background noise, you know what I'm saying? I'm in foreign territory right now because we have an event today at 6 to do um, a free tasting of acai bowls and avocado toast and stuff like that at a place called Ever Bowl out here in Virginia Beach. And they have another uh, spot in the Greenbrier area if you are in Virginia. And they do fruit bowls and stuff like that, so it's fire. But they decided to give us, uh, our, our community, more purpose, a free tasting of each. So that's fire. We appreciate y'all, Ever Bowl, for that. And that's what we have to do after this readings. But we're going to make sure we always go make sure we get the reading in first. So for those that aren't here, you know what I'm saying, I'm still making sure I'm getting the work. We get it done now. We get the readings done wherever we can, however we can. So, and as y'all can see, I have a haircut now. You feel me? I have a haircut now. I didn't have a haircut last time. <laughs> last video, I looked homeless. You know what I'm saying? I didn't have a haircut. But I have a haircut now. So, thank you, Jesus, for a haircut. Thank you, Lord, for favor. And we're about to pray right in. Enough chatting about me. Let's get to this word. Let's do what we came here to do. And let's learn some more about Christ. You feel me? So, all my eyes clear. Heads bowed, eyes closed. Lord, thank you for waking us all up this morning. Thank you for even allowing me to get out here safely, Lord, to film this video. Lord, thank you for the perseverance. Thank you for the consistency and the discipline that we're all growing and learning as we go along this journey, Lord. So I ask that you bless this word to stand out to us. Bless us to learn something new. And bless this version to be even more raw and uncut, Lord, to where it's just authentic, to where we just feel your presence, Lord. And we just have the hard posture to grow closer to you, Lord, and that they hear your words and not my own. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. And with this one, it probably won't be too much editing, only because I want to get the video out to y'all on time. So excuse me if y'all don't have any cuts. If y'all hear me, you know what I'm saying? If I'm, if I'm sweating, if I'm stuttering, whatever it is, it won't be cut out probably in this video. Y'all got to see the whole thing. So, but, um, yeah, let's get right to it. Proverbs chapter 16. Hopefully, I don't get copyrighted by this music in the background, but I'm going to try to edit it so y'all can't hear it at all. But yeah, Proverbs chapter 16, verse 1. And I'm going to highlight it already because it's one of my favorite verses as well in Proverbs. Verse 1 it says, We make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. That is good. We make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. Verse 2 People may be pure in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. I have that highlighted as well. The Lord has made everything for his own purposes, even the wicked for a day of disaster. The Lord detests the proud, they will surely be punished. Unfailing love and faithfulness make atonement for sin. By fearing the Lord, people avoid evil. That's good. When people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. Better to have little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. Excuse me. Verse 9, we can make our own plans. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. The king speaks with divine wisdom. He must never judge unfairly. The Lord demands accurate scales and balances. He sets the standards for fairness. A king detests wrongdoing, for his rule is built on justice. The king is pleased with words from righteous lips. He loves those who speak honestly. The anger of the king is a deadly threat. The wise will try to appease it. When the king smiles, there is life. His favor refreshes like a spring rain. How much better to get wisdom than gold and good judgment than silver. The path of the virtuous leads away from evil. Whoever follows that path is safe. Pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. Verse 21. The wise are known for their understanding, and pleasant words are persuasive. Discretion is a life-giving fountain to those who, who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. From a wise mind comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. Kind words are like honey, sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. There is a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. It is good for workers to have an appetite, an empty stomach drives them on. Scoundrels create trouble. Their words are like are a destructive blaze. A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip sep separates the best of friends. Violent people mislead their companions, leading them down a harmful path. With narrowed eyes, people plot evil. With a smirk, they plan their mischief. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained by living a godly life. Better to be patient than powerful. Better to have self-control than to conquer a city. We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall. Highlight that, please. My brother's calling my phone. Yo, yo. You got to head there, too? Okay. I'm already here. I'm filming right now. Oh, you're filming there? I'm filming right now. Like, literally right now. Oh, I'm sorry. You talking, like, talking about, like, a Proverbs thing? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. I'm on the way. My fault. You good, my boy? Alright, I'm on the way. Alright, be safe.
I love. Oh yeah. Verse 33, please highlight that. Highlight that for sure. Uh what's the other one? Matter of fact, in my in my Bible for verse 33. Myself. <laughs> but yeah, in my Bible for verse 33, it says, There is no such thing as luck. All that happens in our lives, even the seemingly random toss of a coin, is under the watchful eye and guarding hand and guiding hand of our sovereign God. It is a challenge to our faith to trust that God is truly in control and that He cares about all the details of our lives. But we must remember that we we know that what? But we must remember that we know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them, which is Romans chapter 8, verse 28. That's good. So we're going to read through one more time, see what sticks out to us the most, see what we need to highlight, and we're going to go from there. And this will probably be a quick read only because I don't have my feeling in the Bible to do the other breakdown, so it'll be more so just a reading today. So yeah, verse 1. We can make our own plans, but the Lord gives the right answer. So for those that want to make your own plans, understand that only the Lord can give you which plans are good plans to follow after. Um, verse 2, people may be pure in, that, in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their motives. So even though you may think that you're moving in a pure in a pure way, the Lord is examining your heart. So make sure that your heart posture is reflecting what God will actually want you to do. Not your selfish desires, but actually for the, better, the betterment of God's kingdom. Verse 3, commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. When you make God's business your business, he'll make your business his business. Simple as that. So when you make God's business your business, he'll make your business his business. So put his business first. Commit your actions to the Lord. Commit your works to the Lord. Commit your heart to the Lord. Commit your love to the Lord. And your plans will succeed because now when you're committing to the Lord's work, you're taking on his desires, which will be his plans. And he has no choice but to make sure that his plans which is his business works simple as that verse 4 the lord has made everything for his own purposes even the wicked for a day of disaster that's crazy verse 5 the lord detests the proud they will surely be punished unfailing love and faithfulness make atonement for sin by fearing the lord people avoid evil people don't understand like we just said um yesterday for day 15 having a love of god so much that we know and a reverence for god to where you know like hey i don't want to do this because i know god's watching is so underrated because it helps you stay away from sin. It helps you stay away from evil, like evil actions, evil people, all those different things. So definitely highlight verse six if you can. I'ma highlight it. Verse seven, when people's lives please the Lord, even their enemies are at peace with them. That's good. That's real good. When you please the Lord, your enemies have no choice. Have no choice but to have peace with you. Could not even mad at themselves. <laughs> Better to have little with godliness than to be rich and dishonest. That's facts. Verse 9 highlighted. We can make our plans, but the Lord determines our steps. That's facts. The Lord will determine what, which path you need to take. Verse 10. The king speaks with divine wisdom. He must never judge unfairly. The Lord demands are accurate scales and balances. He sets the standards for fairness. So when you're looking for a decision... That's how I think it was, um, it was an exodus where... The wise counsel of Moses. They was letting him know, hey, you need to get other people to help out with making a decision here because nobody knows how to make a certain decision. You need more wisdom. You need more help. You're not going to be able to do it by yourself. And it just reminds me of how God really is head honcho. He really is the final judge. He really has the final say. And when you always take things back to him, trust and believe if you're generally listening to what he has to say, you'll always be making the wiser decision because you have the heart posture of wanting to know what your master actually wants you to do, what your father actually wants you to do. So highlight that. Um, I might, yeah, I'm going to highlight verse 11. A king detests wrongdoing for his rule is built on justice. Verse 13, the king is pleased with words from righteous lips. He loves those who speak honestly. The anger of the king is a deadly threat. The wise will try to appease it. When the king smiles, there is life. His favor refreshes like a spring rain. How much better to get wisdom than gold and good judgment than silver? That was, that's repeating back from Proverbs 1 through 3. Again, seek wisdom. Verse 17, the path of the righteous, no path of the virtuous leads away from evil. Whoever follows that path is safe. Stay on the virtuous path. 
verse 18, pride goes before destruction and haughtiness before a fall. Pride goes before destruction. So before you see somebody go down, it's usually because their pride got in the way to where they didn't want to make right for their wrongdoings. Their pride got in the way to where they felt like they was the man or the woman and they couldn't be touched. They felt untouchable. Pride came before the fall. But even right after that, they realized you're not invincible. <laughs> so my mom, my mom used to always tell me and Marlon, I don't care how, like, I don't care how bad y'all think y'all are. It's gonna always be somebody better than you. You know what I'm saying? It's gonna always be somebody worse than you that can knock that confidence real low. I don't care how confident you get. I don't care how cocky you get. It's always gonna be somebody that can humble you. And when you have that pride, most likely pride's gonna come before that fall because you didn't want to put that pride to the side. So make sure y'all put that pride to the side, please, and thank you. Uh, verse 19, better to live humbly with the poor than to share plunder with the proud. Those who listen to instruction will prosper. Those who trust the Lord will be joyful. Highlight that. That's good. Verse 21, the wise are known for their understanding and pleasant words are persuasive. Discretion is a life-giving fountain to those who possess it, but discipline is wasted on fools. From a wise mind comes wise speech. The words of the wise are persuasive. That's good. Kind words are like honey sweet to the soul and healthy for the body. There's a path before each person that seems right, but it ends in death. It is good for workers to have an appetite, an empty stomach drives them on. That's good. Scoundrels create trouble. Their words are a destructive blaze. A troublemaker plants seeds of strife. Gossip separates the best of friends. Stop gossiping, please. Please stop gossiping. If you're not praying for them, be quiet. <laughs> if, you, if you're not praying for them, be quiet, bro. That Jamie blowing me. If you're not praying for them, stop talking about them. Uh, verse 29 Violent people mislead their companions Leading them down a harmful path With narrowed eyes, please plot evil What? With, with narrow eyes, people plot evil With a smirk, they plan their mischief Gray hair is a crown of glory It is grained by living a godly life Better to be patient than powerful Better to have self-control than to conquer a city That's good We may throw the dice, but the Lord determines how they fall That's even better Because Back in the day, you know what I'm saying? We used to throw dice and everything. You do not know how, what dice going, how it's going to hit, what number's going to land, or if you're going to win that round or not. But the Lord knows exactly what's going to fall. He knows exactly what cards you was dealt, and he knows exactly how to use those cards that you was dealt. It's up to you to go to him. It's up to you to go to the coach on how to run the play. So that's our reads for today. Thank you for tuning in. You know what I'm saying? I know it was quick reads. I know it was nothing too OD, but I feel like these basic, these basic principles of what we can um, – you know what I'm saying? Apply to our lives. Nothing too crazy, nothing too, um, you know what I'm saying? Like that we can't understand. And I feel like the main thing that, right, the main thing in this chapter was us understanding that we can have all the plans in the world that we want, but the Lord is the one who will determine the path. He will determine our steps. So make sure you're following God's path for you. There's nothing wrong with having desires, nothing wrong with having goals and dreams, but make sure that you're following the path that God has called you to be so that you can be best aligned with the pathway to purpose. Make sure you're giving giving God your all. Make sure you're giving him your yes. Make sure you're aligning everything that you may desire with the word. Make sure it all goes back to the word to make sure that it's in, line, in alignment with what God actually has planned for you. And when you do that, you'll start seeing your life start shifting in different ways. You'll start seeing God shift in different ways in your life because you're making his business your business. So I love that. I love these reads today. Shout out to uh, day 16. It's been a crazy day been a long long day i'm tired <laughs> but i'm so grateful i will never get weary when it comes to reading this word because this word is what's actually refreshing me so thank you lord for again trusting us with your word and for giving us another chance to just grow closer and closer and closer with you so all my eyes clear it's about eyes closed before we got in here lord thank you for just another beautiful read thank you for just the application of what we can learn from just writing goals down and learning that your way is going to be always be the best way so no matter what we may write down for our goals no matter what may we may write down coming up into the new year lord thank you jesus for even giving us your desires for us to write down for us to understand that we make your business our business you'll make our business your business lord because our business will become your business so i thank you and i praise you that's what you bless us to walk boldly and call them once again in jesus name i pray amen all right y'all and as always well first before that like comment subscribe like comment subscribe make sure y'all send this to someone that y'all um that may need to join this challenge you know what i'm saying we're on day 16 we're almost done 
on day 16. Make sure I send it to someone that need a challenge and then leave a comment below about what your favorite scripture was, what stood out to you the most, and um, what's something that you learned from these reads today, you know what I'm saying? I know we didn't get to break down in detail and detail and detail of everything we did, but I feel like we still got something, you know what I'm saying? So make sure y'all drop that in the chat, one, yeah, in the comment section, and I'm gonna be, make sure I meet y'all down there. But other than that, as always, it's always more purpose. Y'all just have to find y'alls. Simple as that. And the whole time, all of our purpose is to go out and make disciples. That's what, that's what Matthew 28 and 19 says. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's go make some disciples. I love y'all. I'm proud of y'all. Let's stay consistent. Let's stay disciplined. Love. Be safe. Thank you.